Welcome to The Weekly, a podcast brought to you by Calvary Bible Church. I'm your host, Jay Ewing. I'm the interim, one of the interim pastors on staff here at Calvary. And I have my friend, another interim pastor on staff at Calvary, Thomas Milburn. Hi, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Everyone's going to be like, what's going what? on at Calvary? We just had this conversation about how our titles should all have interim in front of it. Hmm. Because Calvary is so much bigger and yeah. will last longer than either of us. We'll be around. Yeah. Yeah, totally. It, it is the great Spurgeon quote that we always tell each other. Preach, be buried, and be forgotten. Yeah. yeah. Preach, di- preach, die, be forgotten. Yeah, totally. It's, it's all true. Yeah. It's very true, man. It's very true. But it's- before we die, we'd like to be helpful <laughs> to a couple of people. At least some of us. Yeah. Yeah. We, this is funny. Mm. All right. So Jay and I are fired up. We are f- fueled for this podcast. We are fueled for this podcast. We, we were both thinking we should uh, go get something to eat. Mm-hmm. And we ran over to um, a local, a ba- <laughs> local bakery. <laughs> a local uh, establishment. Lo- eat local. You eat know, local. I, I'm a big fan of eating local. And from farm to table. Farm to, <laughs> farm to table. So we went to this um Local hamburger place called the King of Burgers, the home of the Whopper. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's home of the Whopper of like the things we tell you that are in this sandwich are all lies? <laughs> it's a Whopper of a lie. No, it's flame world. It is. You know, you can taste the flame. You can definitely it's in, taste it's injected <laughs> <laughs> with some with some chemical. You know, it's nothing like taking a good friend to. That establishment and just eating a burger sometimes. Oh my gosh. So I got there and I thought I was going to have a burger, but then I decided I really wanted the <laughs> original chicken sandwich, which is not very much chicken, no, but the, original. <laughs> the, the lady behind the counter says, you should get the full <laughs> breaded chicken that's like real chicken. We make it in the back. Actually. Yeah, we make it in the back. And I said, no, <laughs> I, w- I want the fake chicken sandwich that comes out looking like a hash brown. Oh my gosh. It was hilarious. <laughs> she was like, okay. Okay, she didn't expect that reaction. She no. she thought when she said that she had sold you. Yeah, she thought so. No, she's never met a more resolute person <laughs> in their. You know, I, I wouldn't even say resolute. I would just say I have a very complex palate. Yeah, totally. And a very sophisticated palate. Yeah, sophisticated palate. It's probably a better way of saying yeah. it. Yeah, totally. I just know what I like. We know you know what you like. This podcast knows we know what you like. Yeah. Although we do know still that you're not drinking caffeinated coffee. Yeah. Which is I think still I, so weird because the other day ready. in preaching court, <laughs> you're not drinking caffeinated coffee, but you walk in with a Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> Red Bull is a vitamin supplement. Yes. A Red Bull. I love Red Bull. I know. There's something like, I know the taste is like. Maybe that's why we, so we became unique. friends. Well, it's our love for Red Gosh. Bull that we didn't know about. Could be. Each other. It just brings back memories. You know, there's some yeah. things that you taste mm-hmm. and you're just flooded with memories. You are. Yeah, that it's really important. fun, man. I love Red Bull. Have loved it for a long time. Do I drink it every week? No, no, I don't either. Yeah, but occasionally it's like a Coke. You just it hits the palate the right yeah. way. Mm. Mm. That's so good. Summertime's around the corner. You know, Melina Stein said the other. Wait, day, did you say first and last name? Yeah, totally. Ooh, no, I'm calling her out because <laughs> a couple <laughs> weeks ago she at church we're like we're about to go worship the Lord. She goes, Jay, Jay. Why would Thomas you try to predict on Mother's Day would be snow? It's <laughs> <laughs> like, Melina, sorry. And so this Sunday, they were up reading scripture. They're just blessing. They, I love them too. But she was blessing me by reading scripture. And then she was like, Jay, you're a week off. <laughs> <laughs> week off. How many people planted flowers? Oh, uh, no. Thinking the Mother's Day was the safe place. It's really funny to drive around town when it snows in spring. And see all everyone's lawn is covered with litter, like boxes, yeah. tarps, blankets, <laughs> beach <laughs> towels. You're like, that doesn't look very nice. <laughs> We're all saving our plants. We're all saving them, trying to, trying to, trying to. Yeah, that's really funny. I I think that was just really funny. So well, here's another question: Document it for the archives. Someone listening two years from now will be like, what are they talking about? But it is May. 24th may 24th will there be another snow in colorado before fourth of july i'm going with no Ooh. 
I think that okay. was it. I think that's, there's always that one last storm. Yeah. I kind of predicted it would be in April, though. Yeah. That one was kind of late. I think there could be. Like like measurable snow. Not like, just like snow flurries, but measurable yeah. snow. Measurable snow. I'm calling it. All right. Okay, so the funny thing is, you know, Pastor Mark, he's a man of wisdom. He said today, he's like, he made a comment, the four seasons in the four seasons. That's why we love Colorado. Mm. I had never heard that before. Four seasons in the four seasons. Yeah. And it's so true, right? Yeah. Every Like every fall we have like this heat wave and then we have snow and like, you know, it's like spring, same thing. So do we have 16 seasons then? Ooh, that's really cool. I like that idea. Anyways, yeah. things that Jay and Thomas talk about over Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've been waiting to give you a dad joke. I know okay. you appreciate dad yeah, jokes. Yeah, I love dad. I love a good dad joke. Okay, here's here's the dad joke I yeah. heard. I don't know where I heard this from, but I thought that was actually really good. So when does a joke become a dad joke? I don't know when it wears tube socks. When it becomes a parent. Oh, <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> I'm using that with my kids tonight. That's so good. When that's it, great. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's get it. Let's get into okay. it. Hey, Calvary Bible, we want you to get to calvarybible.com. I say it every week. Get plugged in. Get known. Be known. Know a bunch of other people here at Calvary. Grow in your faith and by getting connected. So go to calvarybible.com slash events. Click your campus. We got so many great things happening this summer. We got Kids Week is out. We got the middle school Maranatha. We have CIY for high school. It's going to be a great summer around Calvary. Also, in the month of June, we have mission trips leaving. We got backpacking trips leaving in July and August and even September. You want to go to calvarybible.com, get connected here at Calvary. Also, this next week, we finish up the book of James, and then we're into the summer series. Thomas, what is the summer series this year? The summer series is called Unsung Heroes. Okay. So we got about 12 weeks where we're going to look at Less familiar mm -hmm. characters in the Bible that display a characteristic of faith mm -hmm. that we can imitate. And then in the story, how does God interact with them that reveals a character trait of God that we can trust. That is great, man. So who are some of these characters? Can you spill the beans? I don't know if we should, because then people might go, might go look them up. Oh, okay. Which, is that a bad thing? I don't know. Yeah, totally. I, don't, I think it's mystery, mystery box. Yeah, I mean... I love a good mystery. I, I will say... Maybe or maybe not. Well, no. Now let's keep it all. Will Melchizedek be in our midst? Oh, summer? he's too well known. Oh, he's too well known. He's too well. Oh, known. that's so good. There are. I will be honest. Like there are a few that people have selected. Yeah. That I was like, that's not <laughs> quite an unsung hero, but yeah. If, if have power to you. If a Christian band has named their band after that name, it's too popular. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, if someone's named their church after that name, they're too popular. Yes. Yeah. So These we're gonna go. Unsung. We're gonna go with unsung, and I think it's fun because it's like yeah. what you're gonna see are people who have really ordinary, sometimes ordinary stories. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's extraordinary events, but they're ordinary and they're ordinary acts of faith that really have have changed people's lives, mm -hmm. have changed the outcome of communities, mm -hmm. of cities, of countries, and you just never heard of them. Um. And then we're going to look at them and say, see, these are characters, characteristics that we should have in our life. That is great, my friend. It should be fun. It's really it should fun. be a really fun series to be around and just be encouraged and inspired to keep trusting Jesus. Yeah. So cool. I can't wait for that. And I love obscure Bible trivia and Bible names. So this really leads to Jay Ewing. This is good. And you know what? If, if you are currently expecting a young child, mm -hmm. we can add these names to the baby name list. That would be great. That's really funny. Did I ever tell you the time my brother and sister-in-law, maybe I don't have time today to tell this, but I'm going to tell it anyways. They <laughs> sent out a list, an online survey for four names of what to name their kid and ask the family to vote on it. That, Did I ever tell you that? That was the way they chose names? Well, it went so poorly because Jay made fun of half the names yeah. <laughs> that they chose not to tell us until the birth. I, I feel like here's a good barometer when you're choosing names. Right. What's your this is a good Thomas tell, tell a group of middle schoolers the yes. name, 
and see what they quickly rhyme back to you. Ooh, that would be great. And you're like, oh, I, knew, I wasn't even thinking of that. <laughs> We're definitely not going. Yeah, no doubt. Whatever. Yeah. That's really funny. Okay, let's get back in the James. You preached through James 7 through 12, which was a, one, of one, the, yeah, one of the most famous passages in James, for sure. Um, he talked a lot about uh, being patient. There's also talks about uh, the day of the Lord, grumbling, examples of faith. A reference to a prophet. I, I want to talk about this first. When you looked at verses 7 through 12, and you you preached it this week, and on Monday you thought about sort of the text again, what stood out to you? You were like, I wish I would have said more about this, or I wish I would have, you know, this is something that I need to implement in my life, or what's what stood out to you? Yeah. Usually on Monday... <laughs> What I'm thinking is all the things I wish I would have said yeah. better, yeah. more clarity. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that came out, and I was, was processing this with a, a few others who who taught this weekend, was, and is this like the prescription for all kinds of suffering? Mm-hmm. Or is this the principles and practices that, J, that James wanted to give to his people mm-hmm facing their unique kind of suffering Mm -hmm. or is this to be played out in all circumstances of suffering? Hmm. Um, Like no matter what the suffering is, like health news, broken relationships, it's like, this is it, be patient. Or is this unique to an oppressive kind of suffering where you really are in a situation where like you can't change it. Mm -hmm. Like I want to change it. I don't have the, the, the might to change it. There's not a judicial system to change it. Um, we have to wait for God to bring about the resolution. That's why we're being patient. Um, I think that was just a, a, a thought that maybe should have been further developed mm-hmm. is to what degree is this applied hmm. in in all sorts of arenas of our suffering? Yeah, totally. You gave a great definition of a patient that I wrote down, but I don't have in front of me. You talked about this whole section of being patient is the willingness to wait on a future outcome mm-hmm. and really the outcome being a resolution. Mm-hmm. So you could think of that with you know, you're, you're being patient to wait for your child to be born, right? So it's you're in a season of waiting for a resolution or an outcome, mm-hmm. which would be the arrival of your son or daughter waiting in the season of marriage, right? There's a, there's a period where you're waiting, waiting, you know, there's all sorts of stuff. So patience is the ability to wait on the resolution or an outcome to be, to be brought to you. And, and you, and yeah. And you made the, the point that one of the reasons why the Bible is so clear about patience is that we're waiting on the resolution to come from God. I think that's specifically here to the oppression, right? It's like, I can't actually do anything. Hmm. And so I'm waiting on the, on the timeline of God's resolution. Hmm. That's really hard to do. Yeah. That's like, that's an impossible task at times. I mean, just an honest human. Well, yeah, I think, you know, when we were saying what what breeds impatience is I'm not willing to have any waiting. Yeah. So I want it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's or good. two, I'll, I'll be willing to have a timeline if I get to determine the timeline. That's how I, I d- deal with my patience usually. Yeah. yeah. It's like, okay, well, I'll, I'll wait three days. Yeah. I'll give you three months to figure this out. But then, then I'm over. And right. to, to wait on the Lord's coming, the Lord bringing resolution is, okay, I'm surrendering not only the resolution, but I'm surrendering when that resolution will be brought to me. And how long I can wait possibly yeah. for that resolution. That's really tough. Yeah. That's really tough, man. So I think what makes it hard is in our mind we think, so we have no participation in it. Mm-hmm. So what do I do? Just sit here, which James speaks directly against, like patience is not idleness or passivity. Yeah, he speaks specifically about that. And do I really trust that God's timing is the best timing? Yeah, and I think that's maybe the biggest question of the text, right? Does God know what to do, when to do something? And can I trust that? Yeah. I mean, that's a hard question. Like, reality is that like, that's just, that's really hard to wait yeah, that I long. I don't have always a good answer of why he waits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We had some clues, you know, because w- he's patient, right? So he's a patient God with us. Yeah, that's First Peter three, three, right? Second Peter three. Sorry, Second yeah. Peter three. Sorry, 
just he's he's waiting for the fullness of harvest to come yeah, in, which right. kind of puts perspective of like in the waiting time, isn't just like it's obsolete. Mm-hmm. Like sit down in this room until the the Domino's delivery gets here. Totally, it's like in the waiting is the bringing about of the resolution. Mm-hmm. So this time period isn't just to sit idle, but this is the necessary time that is actively working mm-hmm. to bring about the promised resolution. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, that's crazy. Speak about that Second Peter 3 passage where there's a very good, we, we reference this passage actually quite a bit about sort of God's days and God's, sort of scope of time talk about how does god view time or how do we view god outside of time Mm, that's probably above my pay grade but i'll give it a shot (laughs) okay um so here's the text that we read i just pulled it up this is second peter 3 8 do not overlook this one fact beloved so one thing i want you to think about that with the lord one day is a thousand years and a thousand years as one day the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but all should reach repentance. Mm-hmm. So I think the, the, the overall point, the general point that he's making is, hey, you're inside time, a day, a thousand years. That feels different to you. Mm-hmm. You experience life differently. For the Lord, that's just, he's outside of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, people talk about, Time only exists when God creates. Because once he creates space, then there's distance, like there's finite distance. And so to travel distance creates time. So time comes with the creation of, of space. It exists. Now God being outside of space, and therefore he's outside of time. And I think it's Lewis who makes the famous observation of watching the parade. Have you heard this before? Where no, I actually haven't. Like when, when we go to a parade, we find a location within the parade. Mm-hmm. And we might be at the beginning, we might be at the middle, the end. Like we've gone to um, the Rose Parade in California several times. Oh, that's really cool. It's cool. Yeah. I lo- it, it's just like those floats are incredible. And so you watch one float at a time. You watch it approach, you watch it in front of you, and you watch it, you know, disappear kind of around the corner. And so that's our perspective of time. It's like the approach of it, the enjoyment of it, the, that it passes you. Whereas the Goodyear blimp up there sees the whole thing happening simultaneously. And so what looks to you in a moment or the whole duration of the parade, he sees somewhere at the same time. I think that's how Lewis describes it. It's a beautiful description of time. So God is completely outside of it. Mm-hmm. And so he's not slow in fulfilling what we think is slow, sitting on our corner from our vantage point. But from his, it's happening. Mm-hmm. And he's aware of the whole plan coming together. Yeah. That's really good for when we talk about when we find ourselves in our own suffering or own disappointments with God or even our own waiting on individuals or people to show up in a timely manner, whatever it is in our lives, diagnosis and hard parenting issues or hard family issues is we know that there's something else at work here. Yeah. God's has a different timetable. And I think, I think the encouragement piece for me from Sunday is at least studying the text is like in the interim, mm-hmm. There's like many things to be doing. Totally. So it's not idleness of like, well, I guess I can't do anything about injustice. I can't do anything about reconciliation. I can't do anything about what's broken, what's hurt, what's painful for people. I guess I'll just sit here on the curb. Mm -hmm. But okay, be like the farmer, the hardworking farmer. Yeah, who plants. Who plants, weeds, and fertilizes, you know. Yeah, and then the harvest is later. Yeah. Yeah. And then be like the prophet who's willing to keep speaking, even though people aren't willing to listen. Yeah. So there's activity of the farmer. There's the faithful speaking and, and proclaiming of God's truth, remind people of these things. And then Job, like he, he's willing to wrestle things out, like this shouldn't be the way it is, mm-hmm. and bring his doubts, concerns, anger, frustration to the Lord. Mm-hmm. So patient waiting on the Lord is it's very active. Totally. I would say even Job, he, he, you have to do that within a community too. Job mm-hmm. doesn't do it in isolation. He does it in a community, even though the community is not helpful at times. Yeah. He still has to wrestle with, that, with others in some way. Definitely. The community is such a huge piece. And we'll, we'll see that actually in this week's text. If you guys come on Sunday, we're going to be looking at the importance of community mm. in our spiritual uh, life, which is actually really good. I don't want to give too much away, but it's, it's going to be really good. That's really good. Of how James concludes the book of drawing us into community. Mm. 
That's wonderful. I love that. Okay, so you get to verse 9. It says, do not grumble against one another, brothers. And I was thinking to myself, like, am I the only one who grumbles? Is is this, like, one of my (laughs) things that I'm the one who has to listen to this? Or does, like, are we all prone to grumbling? Maybe internally or externally. Maybe I I grumble out externally. Externally, when, when do you internal. when do you find yourself grumbling? When I'm tired, hungry, <laughs> stressed, <laughs> disappointed. Yeah, I'm a grumbler. You, you know think you're a grumbler? I mean, I guess. Yeah, I don't always think. I don't think of you as good. My as someone who's characteristic. My best friend in RJ probably thinks I'm a grumbler. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like, it says do not grumble. Grumbling is so easy, and it feels like a release point. Grumbling helps release attention sometimes. Does that make sense? Yeah. When it's not what helpful. What would be the healthy form of grumbling? Yeah, what would be the healthy form? I don't know. Someone smarter than me probably knows that. But I think grumbling is the opposite of patience. Mm. So patience is I'm waiting on a future resolution. So mm-hmm. I'm waiting for you to bring me something or something yeah. to come about. Yeah. And when that comes about. Mm-hmm. And grumbling is... The exact opposite of, well, this is what I want, yeah, and when I want it, totally. Yeah, no. I, but, yeah, I probably, you know, I probably grumbled a lot as a kid, especially in the family road trips. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Or the family, like I used to call them the death marches of like going to do some like water world and not eating and seeing all the sights and having to walk the whole way and not drink water. (laughs) You know, like (laughs) I grumbled for sure. But you know, like, and I find this in my kids, like it's a really hot day or really cold day. And they're like, gosh, it's so hot out here. It's so hot. Yeah. I say, listen, Captain obvious. We all all, know. We all know (laughs) what this means. You know what I mean? And it's, it's, I just find myself easily being able to grumble. It feels yeah. like a release, but it's not really a release because it's a release for you, but to everyone else, it's just an annoyance. And grumbling, I think, is contagious. Mm. Like you start grumbling, then I start grumbling, then we start grumbling. And then <laughs> the bad things happen. And then we we're grumbling. like grumblers. Like yeah. we just become grumblers. Like you ever met someone like you're always trying to give them like, but hey, here's a good perspective. Here's something that, that, that positive that happened. Yeah, but... Now that I won a million dollars, I'm going to have to pay 30% in taxes. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like they grumble so much that they, they've just become that. Mm-hmm. And there's no way to like get them out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, that's an extreme measure. I think here, I mean, James is really talking to the community who's in suffering. So I think yeah. this is what's hard is, gosh, I bring this to my cultural experience. And I, there's just no way I suffer like these people are suffering mm-hmm. under oppression. That's right. Right. And, Gosh, I hope I learned these lessons in the minimal hardships that I have mm-hmm. compared to what they're going through so that when I go through harder things, I can apply them. But I, like you said, you know, I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm, you know, whatever, when I'm suffering, yeah, right? So absolutely. when I suffer, I'm prone to start grumbling. And, yeah. and James says, don't, don't grumble. Don't become like these judges. The judge is there. Don't grumble to one another. And I think of our COVID season. I didn't share this on Sunday. So this is for, this is the members only. Ooh. The members Club of the weekly. Of the weekly. This is for you, weekly listeners. Yes. Um, you know, going into COVID and having to make decisions for Calvary, you know, with elders, with leadership of how it was going to impact multiple communities and multiple counties mm-hmm. when counties had different laws and regulations and we're trying to stay together on these things and trying to be conservative for people who really need us to care for them yeah. and trying to be as open as possible at different times, man, the emails that would come in, the grumbling emails mm-hmm. from people in the congregation of like, you are the worst leader. You know, like some people are like, you're like the antichrist of what's going on. You have no faith. I, I can't believe this is happening. And just to, just to listen to it, receive it and know like, Hey, I know you're not getting what you want. I know I'm not getting what I want, mm-hmm. but we're in this together. And so by grace, let us just be kind to one another. Let us consider one another's needs more than our own. Um, but man, the grumblings came in. And it's interesting being two years removed from some of those early decisions. I've met with some people that have, have just reached out and say, hey, I just really miss Calvary. 
and have met up with me and I said, how, how are things going? Like, Oh, you know, well, not well, whatever. I say, hey, where'd you land? Um, well, we're over here. I just wish I just was at Calvary. Like, but you guys weren't doing the thing that I wanted you to do. And what do I do now? And I've said to a few of them, just my own heart to say, Hey, I wish you would have just suffered with us. Mm. It was hard. It was really hard. And I think if you would have suffered with us, then you would have journeyed with us Mm -hmm. and then you'd be ready to celebrate and be excited about the things that are happening right now. Mm -hmm. Um, It was easy to leave, Mm -hmm. but you are, you are blessed to return. Like you left it. Like I I blessed you to leave. I know we we couldn't meet your needs. And if you desire return, like you step back into blessing. Um, But if we go through hard seasons, like let's not grumble. Let's stay together. This is really high highlighted for me when I read Exodus and New- Numbers and Deuteronomy, because <clears throat> that's why they got kept out of the promised land. They were grumblers. Yeah. They just lacked faith to trust God to provide for their daily need. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. In so many ways. And that's part of the story of when I read them, I'm like, I'm them probably. I'm not like Moses. I'm, you know what I mean? I'm oh, the, yeah. I'm just sitting in my tent like, what are we doing out here? Where's the AZ? Like, there's a promise. Yeah. Why are we going backwards? Like, I had cucumber sandwiches like you made <laughs> in Egypt. I was I was eating better as a slave. You're like, but you were a slave. You were a slave. You we, made we, bricks. We had meatballs. We had meatballs. Yeah, totally. All right, I, so just, I just found myself in that. What, what do you think our practice is to guard your heart yeah, from being a grumbler? Right, yeah. What do you think, Jay? Get around people who don't grumble. Be, you know, just find people who not are like not genuine in their optimism. You yeah. know, because those people are annoying as well, too. You know, they sell you socks and infomercials <laughs> and all that type of stuff. But like just be around positive people, people who like can just like roll with it, you know? And that's always helpful for me to watch someone else try it to do something that I can't do. Another thing is grumbling is one of the big things. We talked about this over lunch is prayer. Be You said probably the greatest, the most spiritual prayer you can pray. You said this actually at lunch today. Uh, I think I'm quoting you right. <laughs> <laughs> you said one of the most spiritual prayers you can pray is at the prayer of Thanksgiving. It, and maybe it's most spirit-filled prayer you can do because you realize that we have so much to be thankful for. Like, we ate a Burger King today without even batting an eye. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know how much it costs. I just gave him my card. I got some napkins and I had a lunch. You know what I mean? Like, that, I should be thankful for that. Mm-hmm. That's incredible. There's people around the world that are be like, that would be amazing if I could do that. You know? Just being thankful for the things you do have, like two legs. Maybe you have two legs that walk, two legs that can get you places. Maybe being thankful that you have a roof over your head at night. Thankful for those small things because those small things actually lead up to protecting your heart against grumbling. What Israel forgot is that God was giving them all this stuff. That's what they forgot. Mm. They forgot how to be thankful for manna. They forgot how to be thankful that they don't have to worry about enemies destroying them because God was protecting them. They don't have to, they forgot how God's ways has saved them out of Egypt. He like destroyed Pharaoh without them ever lifting up a sword. They forgot that. And I think sometimes thankful prayers, like you said, probably the most spirit filled type of prayer against it's, grumbling. Yeah. You may think you're right on. I think you were sharing some stories about, family members that express like mm-hmm. reasons for gratitude totally. in their day. And that's probably true. Like gratitude guards us against grumbling. That's, that's a quote right there. Someone should, should quote. tweet that. Some, some yeah. bot from Twitter should be listening to yeah, us totally and tweet totally that out. Totally. Yeah. Make you, millions off of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, then we have to pay 30% tax. Yeah, then we have to write that. Ridiculous. Um, but I think the point you made of like, you got to look for this stuff. I think mm-hmm. there's some of us that aren't just, are not looking for the Lord's activity, the Lord's kindness, the Lord's provision in our life. Mm-hmm. Or maybe we just have stopped looking right. because the things that aren't going well are so much more obvious to us. Yeah. I was hanging out with Ruby 
uh, Sharp this a couple times this last week and saw her again on Sunday and um, she had recently lost her husband and mm-hmm. you know we're we're getting ready for a service coming in June and um, Ruby's just like a saint I mean just I mean Lou Lou loved the Lord Ruby loves the Lord and I asked you know I keep asking Ruby how you doing what's what's been going on she goes oh the Lord is up to so many things mm-hmm. and we talk about the things that God is up to in her life even right now. Mm-hmm. And she always says this though. She goes, people need to have eyes to see. Like they need to be looking for these things. Yeah. And she has just trained her eyes to see so that it's just more evident to her. Maybe like she, like she just practiced that muscle. So what happens during the day, what happens with doctor's visits, how she's feeling physically um, like into her senior years. Like mm-hmm. she just sees God's activity everywhere. And I think for us who are younger, we just need to practice during the day recapping the day, getting ready for the day. All right, Lord, give me eyes to see. Or I saw this, I give you thanks. God, was this you moving in my life? I'm going to give you, you know, yeah. honor for it. And just trying, just trying to look for the Lord's activity. Totally. One of the remedies for uh, addiction, and re- actually one of the remedies for depression is the same thing, is that you keep a gratitude journal. Yeah. And that's one of the major practices that help a lot of individuals through those two things. And I think it's right. It gives you eyes to see that things are going well or better than you think they are. Yeah. And, you know, that might be for our listeners, you know, you might have teens in the house struggling through a season of like catching their attention or uh, being able to relate to them or whatever. Like how can you be thankful for them or like marriages that are on the rocks or things like that is to find ways in which you can see God has blessed you with those individuals and those resources, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, one of the things actually, this is this, I want to go there and I don't know if I should, but you know, in spiritual formation. So when we talk about people creating habits to engage with God, one of the greatest things you could do to start your prayers is by praying thankful prayers. And one of the things you can do by connect with God is to thank him for the simplest things right in front of you. And it's going back to that prayer. But, you know, every morning when I get into God's word, the one thing I am thankful for first every morning is that cup of coffee I just made. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And it sets, no, it, it might be silly. No, it's great. It, but, like, that is the one thing that sets my heart towards something good. Yeah. You know, like it's just a ritual of remembering that, okay, coffee's good, Bible's open, this is good. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So find your things that will continue to point you. This is what the point is, is point you to God so you won't grumble. I think you, another thing is, is share your story about how God has changed your life more and more because you'll stop grumbling when you start realizing how much God has done for you. Mm-hmm. So it's like telling people what God, like if you got the Uber driver's ear, tell them how, what the Lord's done in your life. Oh man. If you got Home Depot guy in the, the aisle, start talking about how good the Lord is. You know what I mean? Cause like those will keep you from grumbling as well. Yeah. That's good, Jay. That's really good. Yeah. Well, I know it is it is challenging. We are we are in hard seasons. I know people are really suffering. And I, I just pray that the words of James would really strengthen your soul, that the Lord is active. He's calling us to activity, um, but that we would wait on the Lord's resolution. Mm-hmm. And we work towards the things that we know that please him. That's why we're the people of mercy and justice and, and humbly approaching him and walking with him. But just to know that the Lord who sees you and knows you, who hears your prayers, is actively moving and one day will resolve all things. That's going to be an amazing day. Yeah, it is. I'm, I can't wait to do it with you, Thomas. It'll be a fun day to watch. God put everything right. All right. Thanks, Gallery, for listening. We love you. We hope you have a great week. Hopefully, maybe we'll get some snow between here and 4th of July. Who knows? <laughs> if not, we'll go to Burger King. <laughs> Talk to you later.